What's going on you guys? My name is Kobe Downey and welcome to another awesome video. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use SolidWorks and 3D printing to create awesome things like this skateboard. It's not a skateboard, but it could be. <laughs> Don't want to break my ankle again. What this is, is a camera dolly. What a camera dolly is, a car for your camera. Basically, you put your camera on this and push it around. Now, you can get camera sliders, but those only move in one straight direction. This design has wheels that can turn, so you can go and do circles and arcs and different kind of camera angles, and interesting camera shots. Now, these are mostly used to create B-rolls. Now, you can go a step further and add a motor to this and allow it to run as a time-lapse dolly. But we went really, really simple, really budget and just made this. So let's get into how I designed this, printed it and assembled it. So to start off I took the shoe from my tripod, that's what this little thing is called. I then uh, used a vernier caliper to write down, to take down some of the measurements. I then used those measurements in SolidWorks. I, I started creating the model of the camera shoe in SolidWorks so that I knew what I was working with. I then produced this basic block prototype to just make sure that I was happy with the fitting of it all. Once I was happy with that, I started doing my design. I had a basic idea of what I was doing and the direction that I was going. I created these two gears. The idea of them was to interlock with each other so that the wheels would be perfectly mirrored. I had this idea of having two discs on the top, the idea of the shoe locking them in place. I did actually print this design and it turned out that it didn't work too well as the tolerances were too loose and I wasn't able to create high enough tolerances to make them work properly. Once I was happy of how the gears were working, I then put in two blocks which would represent the wheels to figure out where I want the wheels placed. I rotated them around a point to see if they'll be touching and then I started working out the distance of where I want the wheels from each other. Just so that I have a wheel base that doesn't clash when I try and turn it all the way. I want it really tight. And use fillets and chamfers to kind of shape it up. This is the second design that you see here. After I tested it out I realized those larger top discs weren't going to work so I created some smaller ones and then I put a, a slot and a key in the bottom of it that the gears would fit on so that the gears would have a lot more strength because they were just wobbling around way too much. went off to the printer and started printing them out. These were being printed in a PETG filament. It's a filament I really like the color of, but doing complex designs that require overhangs and supports and high tolerances, I found that the material is really not good for this. It couldn't really achieve the bridges or the gaps that I was trying to get with this design. I did print them on a different machine out of PLA and the results were much, much better and I was able to assemble it and actually use the parts.
As you can see, these are the PLA parts of the new design. Uh, and it was time to assemble. You can see how the slot that I created allowed me to keep the gears in place without having to use the top lock. I got a little bit ahead of myself and I put the screws on there already with axles and I realized it's not going to work out. I thought I got it right but it was one gear too much to the left so I had to sit and unscrew one of the threads. I eventually got it. As you can see the gears just lock into place. Put the axle where it should be. I then grabbed the skateboard wheels that I used. I used skateboard because they had um, bearings already integrated into them and they're nice and heavy. I want the base to be heavier than the actual camera or else the camera is just going to fall over. I used a little tool to get the little inner ring in line, put the bolt on. And did the other wheels. That was it assembled, mostly. And then I had to put the locks on the top, just kind of stop it from rotating too much. Essentially the wheels would actually do that. Put a bit of super glue in there, just to make sure that they stay where they are and where they need to be. Grab those locks. I then turned it over on itself so that the weight of it can keep it in place. Once the glue was dried, cleared away some of my tools and got the camera to slide on. Fits perfectly. Rolls perfectly. This bittersweet heat is suffocating I'm waiting and always hesitating So I just ran some basic test footage here just to get my used to it because this is something new, something I've never used before Set my heart afire yeah. Tried different wheels and tried figure out what it would look like. After doing this I found it was much better to have the system that I used where there wasn't a specific location for the wheels to be in because it can be quite finicky to get the wheels exactly where you needed for that specific object and each object is completely different. So it worked out in the end which is fantastic. Yay me! This is when I finally got the, the angle right and the object stays centered. I was happy with this. I then set up a little studio shoot with um, some tripods that I had and some sheets and some clamps. Again, to just experiment, see what kind of glamour shots I could take. Um, I put in a bunch of my collectibles in this. This is my entire Simpsons Lego collection that I own. This is my Darth Vader that is actually signed by Dave Prowse, who played Darth Vader in the original two movies.
So this camera dolly just allows you to get some really, really cool shots that can be used to show off objects or can be used as B-roll above your main feed. So this was a really fun little project. Took a couple of skateboard wheels, a bit of plastic, and boom, I've got myself a little dolly. You know, some dollies cost like 300 pounds or 300 dollars. Now around that mark, which is really, really crazy. If, you know, if you're doing this as a hobby, if this is not your full-time gig, for the price of a burger and a beer, I managed to create something that I could use to create some awesome b-roll footage at an affordable rate and this is the kind of power that 3d printing is enabling people to do is to make their own things it's allowing people to build things that they cannot afford and they just make it themselves putting the power back in the users hands I hope you learned a lot from this I hope you take from this that the idea of the idea that you don't need to fork out a lot of money to get some fancy equipment to do some fancy shots some of the stuff you can build yourself and really, really simple to put together. If you've got any questions about this, if you've got any questions about my design techniques, please leave them down in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Wee! <laughs> yeah, I'm not breaking my ankle for this. Or could I?